Hey, it's Bizzle Atari with a tutorial for mining on macOS. Go to Atari.com, click on Downloads, click on View the Binaries, and then Download for Mac. When your download is done, go to the Downloads folder, open the Atari Base Node 0 folder and inside there we have a Mac package installer. Double click that. You'll probably get this warning. Uh, this is because the package isn't currently notarized by Apple. So all you need to do is go to security and privacy in your settings and you should see this message that the the package was blocked you can open anyway and hit open again that should give you this package installer just follow through the steps click install provide your password and your Tari software is installed. It doesn't matter whether you keep the installer or not. Now, in order to find your software, you can go to Finder, to the Go menu, and go to Folder. And you're looking for the .tari folder in your user directory. As you can see here, we have a bunch of shortcuts to the binaries. The first thing we need to do is start Tor. Since Tari runs over Tor by default for enhanced privacy. As you can see here, we've Tor has opened some control and socks listeners. So let's go ahead and fire up the base node. It takes a second. We can just increase the size of this window and you can see the Tari base node is now running. It has a useful status line that appears every 30 seconds or so. And you can now see that we're already syncing blocks. The tip is at 367 on the new Dibbler testnet at the, at the time of recording. We can type in here help to get a list of commands in the base node. So while we're syncing, let's go ahead and start up a console wallet. The, the, we need both a base node and a console wallet for mining, since the console wallet will keep our, our hard won funds. Okay, here in the wallet screen, you can see we want to create a new wallet. So we'll enter option one, create a new password and confirm with the same password. And then go ahead and copy these seed words to somewhere you can keep them really safe because you can use those to recover your wallet should you need to down the line. Let's now type in confirm and that takes us into the wallet screen. This is the console wallet. You can see a number of tabs at the top. Uh, the way you navigate is by using the left arrow and the right arrow. So if we go right, you can see send, receive, and here's the network tab. And it seems that the randomly chosen a uh, peer that is selected is is offline at the moment. That tends to happen in a decentralized network. What we can do here is just click the B button, scroll down and try a different um, peer. Now what's, what's optional but nice to have is to 
connect your console wallet to your base node. So back on the base node screen, we're going to type in who am I? That provides uh, contact details essentially. Copy the public key hex string and switch back to your console wallet screen. Hit P to enter the public key. Mac V to paste and then enter. Go back to the screen and copy the public address. And paste that in. Hit enter and we can see it's connecting now. Now that the console wallet is connected, we can see that the chain tip is at 368. Here's a list of the wallet's connections. And if we go back to the base node, we can now see that the base node is in a listening state and it's at the tip of 368. If we use the command list connections, we can see a number of peers for our base node and they all seem to agree that the current chain height is 368. All right, now that we have a base node and a wallet set up, let's get to mining. Here we're going to use the Tari mining node. And when we click on that, it fires it up. Okay, Tari mining node. It's connected to our local base node. It's connected to our local wallet. And in a short while, it'll tell us how fast it's mining. There we go. Minor zero, which is the one thread, is mining at 0.12 mega hash per second. Um, and now we're only mining with one thread, so it uh, could be a bit of a struggle to mine a block. So what we're going to do is hit Control C to cancel there, and let's update the the config for our miner to run at a higher number of threads. So in our home .tari folder, we go to config and config.toml. This is just a text file, so it can be opened with the, the standard Mac text edit application. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. We can just Mac F to find, type in mining underscore node, and that takes us down to the mining node configuration options. What we're interested in is num mining threads. We're going to remove the, the hash at the beginning of the line, which comments it out. And we're going to set it to six threads for now. Save the file with Mac S and then fire up our miner again. Start Tari mining node. Okay, once we're connected, we can now see that we're mining over six threads with a total hash rate of 0.56 mega hash per second. Now we can leave that running while we go back to our console wallet window. And then we'll just hit the left arrow key to transactions. As you can see, we have a Coinbase transaction here. This is created for the miner. Um, should we win a block for this height, this is the payout. A Coinbase is a payout transaction for the miner for mining the block, as well as all the transaction fees. If we push T here, we can see some additional information about this transaction. It's for block height number 371, which is the next block to be mined. 
and we can see that it's only spendable at block 377 should we win it that's the the outputs maturity as it's known and that's a coinbase lock height of six blocks just to make sure that funds can't get spent before they get reorged out it's a, a bit of a technical detail we don't really need to care about at the moment but what you will see is that this text is yellow meaning that it's time locked and once it's mined we'll still have to wait for that lock height before that amount can be spent in the meanwhile when we do win a block the 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 console wallet itself has a number of required confirmations before that could be spent as well that's a, a configurable setting in the config it's defaults to three blocks and that's for the same purpose of avoiding spending funds that may be reorged out once once a transaction has three confirmations on the blockchain you can be fairly certain that uh, we won't have a big reorg so we can just leave the miner running and hopefully win a block after running at that height for a while we can see that block number 371 has just come in from somewhere else on the network and so our miner has had to start again for the height 372 and if we go back to our console wallet we'll soon see well if we click a we can see some abandoned coin bases for previous heights which we didn't win and now our miner is mining for block height number 372 and that's all there is to it depending on your luck and the hash rate of the network you'll see blocks found in your miner transactions accruing in your console wallet happy mining good luck